Hey guys, Mal the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with the second part of our Let's Make a Demonic Altar. Yes, we're back in the Back to Basics playlist and we're cracking on with this big beastie. Now in the last episode, and I'll throw a link up to it now, we tackled the major structure of it. So we tackled create, fixing the skull down, adding all our skulls onto the back, doing our cracked earth around this rim here. Yeah, ready for our resin, or what you call it, blood effects. Do we, we did our horns. I was great on that was. And then we tackled adding on our top so it was nice and flat. And I've made our top out of 10 mil and a five mil sheet. And that's super important as we get to this next stage. You see, what we're gonna be doing is taking this off very carefully. Yeah, and what I want to do is I want to embed a blood pool in here. Yeah, that's gonna work with the sort of demonic portal here. So what I need to do next is I need to get a pencil and I just basically need to shape this up a bit better. Yeah, put in the mark for my blood pool as well as a blood pool. I'm also intending on my last two skulls that I had out my one pound bag from the pound shop. Yeah, I think I got them from B&M if anyone's asking. You'll have to look for them next Halloween. I think they're all sold out and I've used all my stash on this. But these are gonna get embedded into here as well, so I need to embed that in. And then I just need to clean up these edges so it's ready to stick down and glue down and then we can texture it all up, etc. So, that's my next job. All I'm gonna be doing is drawing it out with a pencil and then with a craft knife, just cutting it all out and shaping it up. So, cracking on time. So that's all my platforms cut out and glued down. Now if you come down you can sort of see it is sculled up to the max. Straight off you can see that I've used pearl pins, yeah just to hold this top 5mm layer down. Yeah and if I lift it up like that you can see where I've got my sort of pool there. Now I do have plans for this bit at the back okay and a little bit round here but I'm gonna have to do that once I've shaped it up and done a little bit more work with it I need the top to dry before I can go in and start messing around with it and I've got plans for a few extra bits there but we'll save that for then as well now walking through yeah obviously I cut it out I glued it down with PVA pinned it in in the case of the hot uh, the two skulls I used hot glue just to pin them in place with a bit of PVA around them now in the case of the little platforms at the side as you saw it was just a matter of roughly figuring out a rough cut for them getting glued in place with a bit of hot glue yeah I ran the hot glue cool so it didn't melt the polystyrene yeah just by running the hot glue cool all I mean is I put it on the plastic and let it cool down a bit before I put the polystyrene on it so it wouldn't melt yeah I need to get a variable temperature oh what you call it heat gun I don't have one I've got I've got four heat guns. I've got small ones, big ones. I've got wireless ones, but I haven't got a variable temperature one, which is the one I need the most. Typical, eh? So if you haven't got one, just remember, you can blow on it to cool it down. You can use it just as it's plugged in and it's just warming up, or you can unplug it, let it start cooling down. When it starts getting a little bit more difficult to flow, that's when it's cooling down, guys. But anyway, I digress. 
So I used hot glue to pin these in place, but we've got a lot of gaps underneath and around it and that sort of stuff. And that's my next stage. It's the last of the sort of foundation work to do. I've got to go in and I've basically got to get our old uh, Daz modeling putty. Yeah. And I've got to watch because it basically just fill gaps. So, cracking on time. Said that once already, haven't I? Doesn't matter, still applies. Let's get stuck in. So that's all done for us now and all my Dallas modeling putty has dried. It's looking rather nice. Now I've filled in a lot of the gaps, I've filled in under there, I've added the layers on, yeah, and filled those in. And at the same time, these are all glued down now. Yes, yeah, so this is effectively one solid piece of foam even though I've managed to use it to get my little pool in there. And that's going to be important for our little demon portal that we'll do in a little while. But the first thing is, now that it's all fixed in and it's all dry, it's still looking rather flat, okay? And I need to turn this into more stone-like, like rock. So the battle plan is, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along, and the first thing is I need to change this profile. So I'll be cutting into here, yeah, Beveling it off there, coming into here, beveling it off, and we're putting some chips in, and effectively just making this a little bit more irregular. Well, regular? Irregular. <laughs> yeah? Once I've done that, I want to give the foam a bit of a stone texture, and for that, I'm going to be using tin foil. Now, this is aluminium foil, kitchen foil, all wrapped wrapped up and rolled into a little silver ball. And what you can do with this is where you've got foam like that, okay, because of the texture on it, if you just come along and you just roll that around, and there's lots of ways of texturing things up. You can use rocks and rollers and all sorts, but this is a quick and easy one, yeah? You end up with that, which is, it's a stone-like texture. It works really well, but essentially it gets rid of it from being a flat surface to a, a more undulated surface. So I'll be out, I'll have to go over all the blue foam on this and give it a work over that. But that's after we shake these up. So let's get stuck in.
So that's the rest of my blue foam taken to a more realistic stone texture. And if I bring it round and sort of bring it up for you, yeah, you can see what I've done there. Okay, now above all, whenever you're turning blue sheets of foam into stone, the trick is, first off, come in and what you need to do is break up any regular lines. And not just with an even line, you need to be a bit iggledy-piggledy, yeah? The eye recognises even straight lines, so you need to get rid of those, yeah? And that includes when you get rid of the, the angular cuts, the right angles, make sure you don't cut and put replace it with a different straight line. Yeah, so a bit iggledy-piggledy with it. Then give it a long chip in it, yeah, to get this sort of effect. Then we went along with a bit of sandpaper just to sand off everything, clean it up. Then we went in with the tin foil to get that sort of textured effect on the flat surfaces. And then finally, in with a pen just to extenuate a few of the cracks and that sort of stuff. And overall, it's looking beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now we're almost at the stage at the end of the build stage. All the major work has been done. All we need to do now is just dress it up a bit. So I've got a couple of little features I want to do on it. I want to put some sort of uh, like, not guillotine, like Axeman's beheading block there. I want some spikes on it, maybe with some skulls on. And I want to put some demon faces on it. Yeah, those will be the last sort of detailing up before we finally just give it a seal and a bit, put a bit of grit on it. So I need to get this detailing up done. Now for my Axeman's block, uh, I'm going to be using a little bit of high density foam. Yeah, this is just a uh, green stuff, really high density. I'll carve it using my knife and sandpaper and stuff like that. And then cocktail sticks for the watch clip, for the spiky bits, and then a bit of, probably, probably milliput for some demon faces. So, with that, let's get cracked on. Now that's all the major detailing done. And if you come down, yeah, you can sort of see what I've done on here. First off, we went with the simple spikes at the front. Just a matter of getting a cocktail stick, poking it in halfway, add a bit of glue, cut your hot cocktail stick in half, then re-put it back in. I always find that when you put cocktail sticks into polystyrene, they won't go all the way through. They sort of get clogged. So it's always better make a hole, cut it short, and then put it in. Don't try and put a full cocktail stick in. 
It's too long. It won't hit. It won't go all the way in. No matter how hard you shove it. Okay. So we've got five cocktail sticks. On top of that, yeah, I did that little bit of carving with the foam there, and we made this little sort of chopping block. Okay. High density foam. Cut it with a blade first. Sand it to the rough shape. Yeah. Then use a file to get my sort of neck choppy thing in, and a little pen just to add, you know, a little symbol and a bit of detail to it. Always helps make it pop. And then finally, the last thing that we did was we added our demonic skulls. Yeah, and if I bring, well, not demonic, demonic faces. Okay, now this was just a matter of putting a blob down, spreading it out, using the tip of a brush to cup her eyes and her mouth, and then coming in and squeezing it to raise them up. The key point with putting the, the faces in is you've got to make sure that the actual faces are quite much higher than the level that you're going to pour your resin. So the ones at the bottom are about 8 mil up. So when I pour my resin in here, they will sort of stick up above the resin, looking like they're emerging out of it. And even though that these are lower, they're still higher than where I was expecting to actually pour the resin to. So they're done. Now all that remains is for the final texture and seal. Now this is a mixture of filler and then a little bit of sand and grit, okay? What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna apply filler around these edges to sort of blend in this edge here. I'm gonna put a watery coat of filler, a very watery coat of filler, over my flat surfaces. This will help seal them ready for painting. It'll give them a little bit more rocky texture as well. But I've gotta be careful that as I do it, I don't come in and actually fill in where I've put in all my cracks. So I've gotta be really watery. I've gotta go in afterwards and just clean out where any sort of recesses. Because what will happen is the water will carry the filler into the cracks. So they tend to fill up when you do this. So quick brush afterwards, just maintain your cracks. Keep them open, otherwise they're gonna disappear and you spoil all your fun, haven't you? Right, on top of that, after that, a little bit of watered down PVA for the sand and the grit. And then finally, on the back here where I've got all my major uh, Daz modeling putty. It's a bit smooth at the moment, doesn't look very rocky. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to stipple that with filler. And that should basically wrap this up ready for painting. So, crack on. Right, all our texturing's done, and as you can see, yeah, it's looking great, and it is solid. Everything is firmed up and ready to go. Now, the next stage is we need to paint this up, and that means base coating it, and then I wanna dry brush up the rocks and the skulls and get all the stonework done. Now, with this being a demonic temple, uh, sort of altar thing, I wanna go really dark. Normally, my stonework is quite light. 
Yeah, but I want to go uh, especially dark with this. So, whereas I'd normally be using my standard sort of dark grey and dry brushing it up, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to throw some black, black acrylic into that. That's house paint, by the way. Yeah, interior wall paint, emulsion in the UK, latex paint in the US. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a bit of black in there, yeah, either a wall paint or a bit of acrylic, just to darken it up and then line it up. So this is probably going to be my highlight, yeah, which should result in something quite dark. But what I want is something that will contrast against the blood and against the watch for all the bronze and that sort of stuff I want to do on this. Well, a little bit of it anyway. So my next job is base coat this up, standard brush, and then just dry brush it up. Key point is when I'm dry brushing, I'm going to be very conscious of, of always dry brushing downwards. Okay, so I can maintain that sort of object source lighting so it looks like it's shadow and it's shaded underneath. It's very easy to dry brush in multiple directions and you lose one of the benefits of dry brushing, which is natural sort of highlighting. Yeah, so in this case, dry brushing down, yeah? Take most of the paint off my, my brush when I'm doing it. Standard dry brush techniques. You don't need a, uh, an explanation on that, surely. If you do, let me know. I'll see about doing a proper video. But on that, cracking on time. Let's get stuck in. So I've got all my base coating done and I've done all my basic highlighting. And if we take a look at it, you can sort of see the, the gray shades as it sort of works its way up in lightness. If I just tilt it up like that, there you go, you can get a better view out of it there. And if we bring it round for that side, you can see my skulls in all their glory. Now, uh, with actually dry brushing this up, remember I went in with a dark gray, I darkened it with black, and then I lightened it up. And the final highlight on this is actually done with my darkest gray. So it's a very gray piece, a very dark piece. Now on top of that, I also did the little uh, altar over here, which I painted that with a, a weapon bronze. That was that from Army Painter. And at the same time, I laid down the colours for the actual blood pools. Now that was done with this uh, Badger Minotaur Regal Red. And you just need a, a deep, rich red colour for that. Not too bright, not too ready red, but more of a, a blood red, if you know what I mean. Bit of purple in it. That's what they mean by Regal, a mixture of red and purple. Okay, and... That's all base coated now. And I also did the spikes at the front, so they're all done. Next job is I need to do the final sort of washing and detailing on this and get it ready for our next sort of resin effects, which we're probably gonna do in another video to be truthful, looking at how long this one is. Okay, I don't wanna rush that. 
Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff. I don't want to time lapse that stuff and I don't want to cram it into the end of this one. So we'll do it that in a separate video. So I'm just going to get this up to the stage, which means we've just got the final washing and detailing to do. Now at the minute it's a sort of monochrome with regards to the grey, i.e. it's stuck in one colour tone. I really need to include some brown in it. I didn't think I was going to need to uh, at the start of the project, but as it's come together and I've looked at it, it's like, yeah, it does need that. Uh, the brown will bring it back to a little bit more realistic. Well, as realistic as a, a skull rising out of a pool of demonic blood can be. <laughs> yeah, but dead simple. I'm just going to get a, a nice dark brown. Yeah, burnt umber or something like that. Okay, do it as a wash and I'm just going to apply it into recesses and that'll give it a little bit more shade. After that, I'll mix a little bit of the brown with a little bit of my grey and just go over the grit and stuff like that and make that look a little bit more realistic. Okay, after that, I'll probably give it a light dry brush with just the grey again, just to knock it back. Dead simple techniques, but it works really well. Put a wash on the uh, bronze bit and a little bit of ink on my little bit of blood there. Yeah, just to re, re sort of firm that. And I've missed a bit there, so I'll fix that as well. <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? Right, so with that in mind, I'm going to crack on with these final washes. Most of it will be done by brush. I might do a little bit by airbrush. Yeah, I did do the red by airbrush. You don't need to. Yeah, it's it's a base for what you call it, the resin. So it's only there to get a bit of colour on. You can do it with a normal brush. Airbrush was just quicker and easier for me, to be perfectly honest. The Minotaur paints, this red, it's an airbrush paint. So it's a bit thin for a brush. So it was easy to just bang it on with an airbrush. Right, with that in mind, I'll get cracked on. So guys, that's the final wash is done and it is looking beautiful. There you go. Now, you pr it's probably too subtle to actually see the brown in it, but you should notice a little bit of a change, hopefully on the camera. Maybe the still pics are a bit better. It is very, very subtle, the brown. If you notice when I was mixing it up, I went very dark with it. And even when I did my slight highlight, I still went dark with that. The idea being is I only wanted to introduce just subtle shades into the recesses. Yeah, just to help define it and take it away from that monochrome look. And it's worked perfectly. Now, the other things that I've done is, I've gone in with my wash and I've gone around my edges. Yeah, just a simple wash, smear it around. That's just to blend this sort of darkness in. If my resins do come off a little bit transparent, I'm hoping they don't, but if they do, that blending will just help it all work and make it look like it's got depth. And that's the idea anyway, but fingers crossed, I want to go for a, a sort of an opacity that's hopefully too opaque to what you call it, uh, too thick and, and solid to actually see through and see the bottom. That's the plan. Now, the other thing that I did was obviously a little bit of light dry brushing, rebring out the edges, and also I went in with some washes. Now, I used uh, a chestnut ink, a brown ink, on the brass, 
and then a little bit of what you call it of red ink just to extenuate sort of the blood lines on here yeah there you go just the blood in that little chopping block there so it's all come together rather nice now this is the end of the build stage as i said the resin parts they're quite complicated what i want to do with this sort of stuff or an element of it is okay and so i want to go through and do that in a proper video without the time lapse and i don't want to just stick it on the end of this one because i think this is about half an hour long already and that's with me skipping through and doing the time lapses You'll have to let me know what you think of the time lapses. I'm still trying to work out with these projects how best to show you. So let me know in the comments down below. And as always, yeah, hope you've liked it. Like it, share it. If you've got any questions about the build or any suggestions or anything like that, that's what the comments are for, guys. I love my comments. And as always, if you really do appreciate these, these videos, guys, and it's normally you guys who make it to the end who do, my good ones, Please consider supporting the channel. I only ask a dollar a month on Patreon, just one dollar. But all of you guys coming together, it helps keep the lights on, the cameras rolling. And me and here making tutorials like this. Yeah. Now, obviously, if you're not into the uh, monthly thing, you've got the one-offs down below. You can either jump in onto Amazon and get me something for the studio off the studio wish list, or just send a couple of quid direct via PayPal. Buy me a digital pint. It's all very gratefully received, guys. So, I'll leave that over to you guys. If you like it, please consider supporting it, guys. The link's on the screen at the minute. Uh, and I'll be back real soon with the resin up, and we'll get this finished. All the best, yeah? Ta-da!